Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. To the household of faith, we say praise the Lord. I want to welcome you into another Bible class here at Bethesda Temple Church here in the city of Los Angeles, California. We thank God for his loving kindness, for his compassion, for being so good to us, uh, the children of men. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. And we delight uh, in his great favor. We delight uh, in his uh, bountiful blessings toward us. Again, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome on in. I uh, invite you to, amen, hit the share button and uh, uh, avail yourselves to uh, join us this evening for another walk, amen, through God's word, amen. Uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so every time we have an opportunity to study God's word, rightly divide the word of truth, uh, it should be imperative that we show up to the dinner table, amen, or show up to the table to eat, amen. Uh, I know it's a little cool out there today, so hopefully everybody is bundled up and warm, a little bit colder than normal uh, here in Southern California, but I uh, certainly hope that you are on fire for, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. I hope that uh, the Word of God stimulated you, amen, encouraged you this past Sunday, amen, uh, to uh, endeavor, amen, not to live a life that's miserable. Um, I went back and, and uh, revisited that myself and... Uh, had to say amen to a couple things <laughs> myself as it relates to, amen, uh, desiring not to live a life, amen, that is miserable. So again, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. I see Elder Clark, amen, the Clarks, amen, Sister Sandra, amen, Elder Gary, amen, uh, to all of those, amen, who make up the body of Christ. Again, we greet you all, God's children, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the opportunity we have, again, uh, to rightly divide the word of truth and to come into your homes to bring the word of the Lord. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Give me some hearts or some thumbs up, uh, some likes or something. Let me know that you can hear me. Um, um, just want to make sure that everything is okay from a uh, technological perspective. But again, we thank God for uh, this Bible study. Thank God for, amen, this opportunity we have, amen, to continue, amen, our study in the word of the Lord as it relates to, amen, the concept of taking spiritual inventory, amen. Thank you all so much. I appreciate y'all, amen, letting me know you can hear me. God bless you to the house. Thank you so much, uh, Deaconess uh, Monica uh, and those who, amen, support us behind the scenes. We certainly thank God and appreciate Amen. You all being with us every week. We're excited about what God is doing here at Bethesda Temple Church. Amen. I want to remind everybody just from some housekeeping notes, perspectives that this Sunday we're virtual. We're, we're virtual this Sunday. So I want everybody again to enjoy the worship experience. Amen. Um, from home, uh, safe. This is our opportunity for us um, to try to be a bit diligent in the midst of the pandemic, uh, to try to use some wisdom to make sure that we don't get out of control with all the things that are going on, um, that we lose sight of the, the need for us uh, to uh, be attentive to uh, some of the things that are coming on, amen, and that we're still kind of dealing with um, as it relates to the pandemic. So uh, bear with us as we get our cadence together, but amen, we're looking forward to seeing you all again in person uh, on the first Sunday in March. And we're looking forward to, amen, awesome worship experiences on March the 6th, the 13th, and the 20th. And we're excited about what God is doing and certainly thank and praise God for, amen, uh, this past uh, Sunday's worship experience. And thank God again uh, for those who, amen, participated this past weekend. It was just a great weekend of ministry uh, for those that had a chance to check out. Amen. The prayer summit, I know you were blessed by that. I certainly was and uh, look forward to. Amen. Uh, again, uh, so many more opportunities that we have to use the wonders of technology to uh, continue to empower God's people and to stir us in the charges to greater work. So again, we welcome you all in the Lord Jesus Christ as we get ready to get started. Again, hit that share button. Amen. Let somebody know that, amen, the word of the Lord is coming forth tonight here in the city of Los Angeles, California. Uh, we thank God again for each number one of you. If you have a prayer request, amen, certainly, amen. I want you to uh, place that in the comment section. If there's one focus that we desire to pray for, it's for our country, it's for our world, amen. As I talked about on Sunday, amen, it's looking as if we're on the brink of a nation being at war. And all of these are in the uh, alignment with the word of God as it relates to the end times and the, the need for us as a people to be attentive to the signs of the time and for us to remain focused and looking up for the promise of God. Now was the time, amen, for many of us to settle our spirits, amen, to stop playing with 
more God, amen, to get down to business with God, to stop being leisurely about our relationship with God, amen, it's time for many of us to stop living the miserable life, amen, that's that lukewarm life, and I'm hoping and praying, amen, that uh, that you're paying attention to what's going on, uh, the news is there, amen, it shouldn't sway us one or the other, it shouldn't spark a, a, a fear on the inside of us when we see these signs uh, of the times, when we see, amen, um, uh, the, the perils of the time, when we see um, all the things that are happening, rumors of war, when we see the love of many waxing cold, when we see blatant sin, spiritual wickedness in high places, and I'm not even talking about spiritual wickedness in high places as it relates to the entertainment industry, I'm talking about spiritual wickedness that we see right even in the church, and, and you know, uh, uh, in, in the local assemblies, for the things that we're seeing in the, in the organization, you know, come on somebody, you know, spiritual wickedness, those kind of things. These are all things that are paramount, amen, to the coming of the Lord. And uh, we have to settle our spirits um, that the Lord is not coming someday. You know, we used to say that there's a difference between any day and someday. Someday, well, oh, it will someday, someday. Any day means at any moment, amen, the twinkle of an eye, the Lord is coming to gather his people. So this is a time for us not to, amen, uh, get frustrated and flustered and for us to get down and melancholy and all that kind of stuff. This should be the time that we are settling our spirits, that we're getting our, uh, we're getting the oil for our lamps. This is the time that we're stirring our spirit to be excited about the coming of the Lord and uh, having the peace of God with us uh, that guides our decisions, amen, so that we can prepare ourselves for his coming. This is the time when we have to start looking up more than we look back, all right? Time for us to start looking up more than we start looking to people for validation. So as we pray, we're praying for our country tonight. Uh, we're praying for the world. We're praying for uh, all the things that are in front of us, amen, our servicemen and women, amen. We're praying for God's protection. We're praying for peace. We're praying for God's divine healing and direction, that God will continue to uh, inspire our leaders, amen, to be peaceable, um, that God's will would be done in the midst of all things, and that most importantly, his people would be protected in the midst of all that's going on, amen. We in the United States, and I'm getting to prayer, y'all, but I just have to, have to share this. We in the United States, are very, we're very spoiled. We don't understand, I think, the... Uh, this thing that we, although we have our issues with America, there is no institution in the world like America where we have the religious freedoms that we have, um, the options um, for some of us who consider ourselves to be down and out. When you compare our down and out to other worlds, other countries, other less civilized uh, nations, organizations, um, and other uh, countries in the world, we have a lot to be grateful for, a lot to be appreciative for. And the fact that we have one of the strongest militaries, amen, um, is something for us, amen, to appreciate. Um, but with that, amen, they require prayers. Our servicemen and women require prayer. Our leaders require prayer. Um, those individuals who are tasked with navigating this uh, situation that's going on need wisdom. And they need our prayers at this time, all right? So as we pray, we're praying for that, amen. We're praying for one another. We're praying for all of our families. We're praying for, of course, for our personal needs. We're praying that God will continue to, amen, uh, pour into the house, amen, that God will continue to bring, amen, uh, souls into the kingdom of God. And uh, I even see a couple, amen, uh, that joined this past week, Evangelist Terry, Sister Bell, amen, Sister Loving Good, those who joined this past Sunday, we thank God for them. Let's continue to encourage them, amen. Let's continue to ask that God will continue to, Amen. Uh, 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 draw them nearer to us in fellowship as they put their hands to work. Amen. And helping Bethesda be him in the best ministry as possible. So as we look to the Lord in prayer, amen, again, uh, our focus is again, amen, tonight, amen, whatever's going on, that God will give us a peace. God will give us understanding, that God will give us an urgency, amen, for us to get into alignment, realignment with his word. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your loving kindness, your compassion. We thank you for being so good to us, the children of men. I ask, oh God, that tonight as we go forth in Bible study, that you look over every need, every spoken prayer request, every unspoken prayer request. I pray, oh God, tonight uh, that your favor would meet our families, it would meet our workplace situations. I pray, oh God, that your favor, oh God, would help us navigate this time in which we're in. I pray, oh God, for your hedge of protection, oh God, as we are, amen, seeing uh, the, the very signs of the times, oh God. I pray, oh God, for peace. I pray for understanding. I pray, oh God, uh, that you have the power, oh God, to sway the hearts of men, oh God, to do the right things. Pray for our government. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying, oh God, that you would continue to cover, that you would continue to, amen, uh, 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 protect our servicemen and women, oh God. I pray for our president, oh God. I pray 
for our leaders. I pray for our U.S. intelligence, oh God. I pray, oh God, for those in harm's way, oh God. I pray uh, for those on the borders of Ukraine, those on the borders in those areas, oh God, just trying to live peaceable lives, just trying to, amen, manage and make it, oh God. They're in harm's way, oh God. I pray for their protection and safety, oh God. I pray, oh God, for a quick and swift resolution. I pray, oh God, that we would rally together, oh God, amen, to bring peace, oh God, for such a time as this. But above all, I pray for your divine will. I pray, oh God, that you would allow your saints, oh God, to have a mindset, oh God, to be looking for your coming, for us to get on fire. Let us be on fire, oh God, for you. Just our hearts back unto you as we give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, we welcome everybody in, amen, to our Bible class. I apologize for that rant. I promise I'm not going to be long tonight. Amen. Um, not feeling necessarily my best, but uh, your prayers may pull it out of me. So pray for your pastor tonight. Amen. Book of John, chapter number eight. Amen. John, chapter number eight, verse 30 through 32. We begin our Bible studies with these passages of scripture. Amen. John, chapter number eight, verses 30 through 32, as well as second Timothy, chapter number two. Amen. And verse number 15. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Let's go over to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Got my little hook up here. With, so I'm looking everywhere, y'all. <laughs> Trying to make sure I'm still on the camera, right? So 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, working with you not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, amen, uh, the word of truth, amen. And again, we bless God for, amen, our lesson, amen. We're continuing on this series of the first quarter I'm devoting to taking spiritual inventory, uh, and uh, thank God for, amen, the lessons that we've received thus far. I thank God for the feedback, y'all. People who have really been blessed by the Bible studies, and I hope that Amen. There are things that uh, you take to heart as it relates to us taking spiritual inventory. Amen. And things necessary for us to pursue the promises of God. Uh, we've been dealing with the concept of realignment. How do we realign ourselves? We have reconcile, realign, readjust, and reimagine. And we're in the second part of that, which is realign. And by definition, we talked about this last week. Amen. To realign. Amen. It means to reorganize. It means to aim. It's a change of position of something in relation to something else. Else. We talked about it. It means to restore to a different or former position or state. We talked about it to bring it something to proper order or alignment. Amen. We talked about sometimes realignment, meaning that we have new arrangements or new orientations. Amen. That we create um, that we create order in a system or activity. And above all, to realign, amen, is to arrange in a straight line, to bring into cooperation, or harmony or agreement, amen, to adjust. And so we've been dealing with that natural, amen, connotation as it relates to the concept of realignment, because I believe that it, the word of God makes it no, amen, plainer as it relates to the way of the Lord. And it's the way of the way of the Lord, amen, requiring us, amen, uh, to follow, amen, the straight path. And so if you ever want to get into a place of realignment, you have to understand, am I, am I, am I in alignment with what the expectation is? Am I, am I straight or am I crooked? All right. And so we talk about that straight line is to align means to, amen, it indicates amen that there's a disturbance along the path that introduces something to us that's out of order um, and when we find ourselves in disorder in life amen is an indication that we need to come back into God's will we need to realign ourselves to his word he is this, you know recent ourselves in his word and so last week we we're dealing with amen King David um, and his need for realignment um, because he desired God's presence and how um, even after he had great travesty, and even though after he was disappointed in an effort that he had as it relates to um, bringing the Ark of the Covenant back into the city of David, how he made some mistakes and how he had to regroup. And in his regrouping, he had to reorganize himself and how in his realignment, there was innovation and creativity and the blessing associated with realignment. I want you to understand something that um, there is such great blessing when you align yourself with God's will. I know that sounds practical, amen. But when you get yourself in alignment with God, the blessings that flow, the favor that flows, amen. And King David saw that even in the midst of travesty, even in the midst of making mistakes, he realized God's presence is so valuable enough, amen, that I've got to, amen, reorganize, realign, get back into God's word because I value his presence in my life. 
And in valuing God's presence in my life, there is a blessing. There is a flow. Amen. There is an oil. There is, amen, promises associated with my alignment to God's will. And so we're talking about that tonight. We're talking about realignment. Um, and, in, and in realigning, we go in many cases to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs gives us so many great insights as it relates to the way of the Lord. Um, we talked about last week the book of Matthew. We talked about the straight gate, all right, and how imperative it is for us to align ourselves to the way of the Lord, the ways of the Lord, his word. And so in the book of Proverbs, we find so many, amen, great uh, uh, seeds of wisdom that are given to us by King Solomon as it relates to our need to align ourselves to his way. Uh, one of those is the book of Proverbs, chapter number 10 and verse number 15, uh, 17. Amen. Uh, Proverbs 10 even talks to tells you, amen, that you start the chapter that this is the proverb of Solomon, a wise man uh, maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is in the heaviness of his mother. Uh, but if you go down to verse number, amen, 17, you will read that he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth, it, he that refuseth reproof erreth. All right. There's another interpretation tells us this. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life. All right. But he who refuses correction goes astray. Realignment sometimes deals with necessary corrections. Amen. Course correcting is necessary for us to get back into alignment with God's will. And those who refuse that correction will find themselves on the path of destruction. The scripture tells us if we go back again to the book of Matthew, chapter number seven, and I'm kind of bouncing around because I want to just kind of you know, build on, on the lesson. The scripture tells us, amen, enter ye at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. There is a path of destruction that is centered, amen, on individuals who are not in alignment. Amen. It's, there's a broad way, the broad way of not being in God's will, amen, and not being centered in God's expectations leading to destruction. And the scripture says there are many, by, uh, there, uh, there, and many there be which go thereafter. It, it, the amen there you'd be surprised how many people amen refuse amen correction they refuse accountability they refuse to make the necessary realignments in their life and as a result of it their consequences is destruction those of you who don't want to walk the line you are guaranteed destruction <laughs> those that don't want to align to god's will don't want to realign your lives are bound for destruction no way around it it's interesting how, amen, we in our minds, amen, think somehow some way that our formulas, our patterns, our paths, amen, our decision making, amen, uh, 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 will not lead us to, amen, the end of result, as the scripture tells us, that is a destruction. We assume that our path is better. Our way is better. The scripture tells us he who keeps instruction is in the way of life. So in order to keep instruction, you have to keep going back to the source. You have to keep aligning yourself, amen, uh, to understand what God's expectation is. You will never find yourself defeated if you find yourself continuing to, amen, uh, 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 recenter yourself, amen, in the way of the Lord. We get that instruction from the book, amen, of Proverbs, amen. There, again, there are so many nuggets that we get from Proverbs. Um, you know, as I was doing my devotion, amen, I, I continue to, amen, every now and then glance at some of the things that, amen, we prioritize because you get great business concepts and great concepts from life, amen. Uh, uh, everything is inspired by the word of God. All right. Every antidote that you need for where you want to go in life. Amen. You, you, every business principle, every psychological uh, advancement. Amen. Every a wonder of engineering. All of it you find in God's word. Amen. And so when I begin to look at the word of God and how it relates to some of the things that we just aspire in life, you'll get great instruction from his word. And that instruction leads to life according, amen, to Proverbs, amen, 10 and 17. So let's go to Proverbs, amen, 28 and 6. Scripture tells us, amen, uh, better, amen, is the poor that walketh in his righteousness or, or walketh uh, in his uprightness. Than he that is preserved in his ways, though he be rich. There is a, <laughs> the Lord says, amen, in his word, 
it's better for you to be poor and walk with uprightness. Amen. It's better for you to be uh, uh, without, but with integrity. All right. Uh, than he that is a man uh, 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 perverse in his ways, though he be rich. All right. Proverbs 28 and six. All right. Um, and so, again, just in these just in these small nuggets, you unlock wisdom. You unlock what's necessary for you um, that it pays to be integral. So our alignment should be in how do I walk up right? How do I align myself to God's word and God's expectation? All right. Uh, then he that is perverse in his ways. All right. Those uh, there are individuals who, amen, we compare ourselves to who are not living a life that's aligned to God. And we think we're at a disadvantage. The word of God says, amen, you can be without because, again, poor does not necessarily mean a designation of wealth. It's a designation of benefit. All right. Uh, to have to be without is, is a designation of poor. All right. He says, it is better to be without. It is better to go a season without something and walk upright. We even we even see this in the story of Moses um, when we talked about his faith. That he, was, he was willing, amen, uh, to endure, all right? Uh, he, was, he was willing, amen, to be faithful to the call of God, amen, <laughs> as opposed to enjoying a season, amen, of sin or enjoying a season of pleasure, all right? So again, when we align ourselves to God's word, there is great benefit for all situations because sometimes we feel like our realignment is the reason why we're, our lack of alignment is the reason why we're without. And I hear the Lord saying that sometimes you can be without, but you're in a better position being without, but walking with integrity, all right, than somebody who you think is making it, amen, with no consciousness of God, all right? Um, as we, let's go a little bit further. Scripture tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, all right? Again, and, and as I go through this lesson, I'm going to be bouncing through Proverbs to, to give different uh, instructions, all right? Um, but the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, tells us uh, in verse number 24, Proverbs 20 and 24. Again, praise the Lord, everybody tells me who are, who are watching or are just joining us tonight. We say praise the Lord to each and one of you, all right? Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? <laughs> uh, you know, it's it, it, Solomon every now and then will drop a, a, a nugget on you that'll have you stew intellectually. For the intellect, just study this. Man's goings are of the Lord, all right? He designs every path. He designs every way, okay? How can a man then understand his own way? You know, we're not even conscious of what we do. God designs, orchestrates everything. So our confidence in our own way, our own grind, our own path, amen, is, is a folly because we have no ability to understand what our next move is. For all of us who think we're so strategical and so tactical and so, amen, uh, 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 so on top of things, amen, we give ourselves, amen, uh, there's an arrogance that's cast on that because there's a false perception that somehow we're in control of our every move. Our every move. And in the ESV, it says, a man steps in from the Lord. How then can a man understand his ways? Let me let me go and find the message Bible so that, amen, we can, amen, get a, uh, uh, just a, uh, a, another, amen, another uh, interpretation of it, all right? Um, he says this, the very steps we take come from God. Otherwise, how would we know where we're going? How do we know where we're going? If we don't get that direction from God, the truth of the matter is, is that some of us are so smart. Some of us are, Bishop Taylor teaches all the time. Some of us know so much for our own good that it's enough to kill us. That they always, that always hung to me. Thought it was such a, a sharp saying, but it made sense. There are some of us who know so much that our knowing so much is our destruction. That's the broad way. And so here, amen, the very steps that we take or are ordained of God come from God, amen. If they don't come from God, then otherwise, how would we know where we're going? You know, there's not enough in you to think that you have it on your own, that you never have to recalibrate and get back to God's way, God's choice. And David realized, amen, as we studied last week, um, that in my consulting with other people, with my own agenda, with my own um, education, my own intellect, with my own sword, you have to remember, if I take a step back for this quick moment, you have to understand this is David who took down Goliath. This is David who is a warrior. This is David who ain't afraid of anybody. 
But in the midst of that, even having, you know, the banner of success militarily and having the favor of the people, winning the hearts of people, having people sing your songs and adore you, amen, still does not leave you without an accountability, still does not leave you without, amen, amen, a recentering and a realignment that's associated, amen, with Amen. Uh, a, a godly expectation. Um, David in his own strength, David in his own arrogance, David with his own, amen, vibrato, amen, went out to attempt to do something, amen, in self and failed to realize, amen, that uh, as opposed to aligning himself with how God wanted him to do it, you can be successful, you can have uh, 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 popularity, you can have all of these wonderful things and still not be in the center of God's will and still not have his endorsement and still find yourself a failure with quote unquote worldly successes. If you assume for one moment, amen, that you know where you're going. And so David in his brilliance, David in his, amen, I believe that was, I believe that's what gave him that heart. I believe certainly you know, the Bible tells us that David was a man after, uh, 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 um, God's own heart. I believe that David, in his sincerity, I think took a step back to say, you know what? In all of my successes, I gotta slow down and get back on, get back in sync with God. And all that God has favored me with, Amen. I can't do this on my own, you know. And I think every now and then, in the, in the rat race of life, we have to recenter and realign ourselves for great success. There's a question I think that maybe Sister Hazel has. You can ask it, Amen. Um, I see your hand up, so I don't know if that's a hand up or if that's, you know, uh, an amen, but whatever you have, just throw it in the chat and we will certainly, amen, do our part, amen, to try to, to answer that, all right? So uh, as as we have, we hear from the wisdom of, of Solomon, you know, we have what King David did, and we talked about, amen, his need to bring, amen, okay, <laughs> praise God, amen. Uh, uh, the, the need to bring, amen, the Ark of the Covenant, amen, back into, amen, the city of David, amen. Uh, we see now the pattern of individuals who chose to realign with God and not in the consequences associated with it. So as I kind of move further in this lesson, amen, I want to kind of talk a little bit about, amen, some of the other kings and, and what they did, amen, uh, and some of the patterns that they took, amen, that Amen. I think uh, we'll, <laughs> amen, show us the necessity of realignment with God's word as it relates to military success. And who would have thought that that would have been, amen, with all that's going on in the world, amen, uh, uh, um, paramount to this discussion. But amen, I want to start, amen, with, amen, one thing that we must do in realignment. If you just have this, you want to take this down, please take this down because I think these things are going to be helpful to you. In order to realign, you have to admit, admit, all right? Uh, admit, just as it sounds, Ad admit, all right? We have to admit that we're powerless over our brokenness, that we don't have power over addictions, our sinful patterns, amen. Uh, uh, in order for us, I think, fully to take heart to what, amen, Proverbs 20 and 24 is telling us is we have to admit, amen, that we don't have all the answers, all right? Romans, amen, seven, amen, and 18, adds a little bit more context to that, all right? And again, I'm gonna just uh, uh, drop some of these on you and you can take these as we build the case and then we're gonna get back into the study of some of the kings uh, and their decisions or lack thereof and how they either followed the pattern of David or did not as it relates to their realignment to God's purpose. But amen, Romans, amen, uh, uh, seven and 18 tells us, for I know that in me, that in my flesh dwell of no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. So David, you know, or, or the Apostle Paul in his writings is being transparent about, amen, uh, what's in me ain't no good. <laughs> and, and you know, I desire to do right, amen, but amen, where you want me to perform and how I'm performing, amen, don't match up. And I have to admit that in order for me to be successful, I've got to align. All right. Um, and, and so there, there takes an accountability there takes there. You know, uh, we don't have the power in our own lives that is manageable for us to 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 amen, live up. Amen. To amen. Uh, 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 the order of God, it requires a help that is beyond us. And that's where the Holy Ghost is our helper. That's why it's so important imperative that we have it. Amen. If we're ever going to be aligned, amen, get back into realignment with God. It starts with us admitting, all right, uh, that 
I need a help that's greater than me. I need a support that's greater than me. Um, our arrogance, our own ego leads us down that path that Proverbs 24, uh, 20 and 24 tells us, which is, I know my own ways. And that's the foolish thinking. That's, 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 that's the folly of the thought. All right. Uh, and then in order for me to get back to alignment, I've got to believe. I've got to believe. Let's go to Psalms. Amen. 103. Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Hallelujah. Sorry, I'm trying to work different things, right? Psalms 103 tells us, Bless the Lord, all that is my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. All right? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all diseases, who redeemeth thy, thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that the, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Um, so Psalms 103, you know, that's verses two through five. They're focusing on um, starts with a belief. In order for us to get realigned, it has to be a, there has to be belief within us, Amen. That won't allow us, Amen, to forget, Amen, God's favor. God's blessings, amen. There's a, there is a, a, a realignment comes back to the idea that God, you are him that can heal all my diseases. You are him that resurrects life. You are him that crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. In order to get realignment, it starts with a belief, amen. A belief that God knows what he's doing, amen. And that God will satisfy, amen, our mouth with good things, all right. That God will renew us, amen, like the eagle's wings, all right? To get into realignment, amen, it starts by admitting, I don't have all the ways, amen, don't have all the answers, amen, but also, you know, a faith to believe, amen, <laughs> amen, that God is able, amen, to be a restorer, that God is able to be a protector, that God is able to get me to my next level in life, all right? For some of us, that realignment starts with just the belief, the belief, all right? that he can do it, that he can, that, that he will settle it. Amen. And when you get back into that realignment of your belief, it'll take the anxieties away. It'll take the frustrations away. All right. Because we're putting our hope and confidence, amen, back in God. All right. In order for us, amen, to, amen, uh, to realign again, it takes our trust. Amen. Trust. Another portion of belief is trusting, all right? Uh, the book of Ephesians, chapter number two, tells us that God is rich in mercy, all right? Um, just want to throw that in uh, throw that in there for some context. Book of Ephesians, chapter number two. We love to read it, amen. And verse number, amen, four and five, all right? But God who is rich in mercy, amen, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. All right. Realignment is about getting back to the basics. All right. Amen. Getting back to familiarity with God's rich mercy for us, his grace. Amen. Uh, that is greater within us and operates with us. Amen. Of our, our, you know, realigning ourselves is taking inventory. Amen. Of what our damnation nation, our damnic nature was. All right. And realizing that Christ has quickened us. Amen through his grace, and we now have salvation to proceed and to move forward, all right? Um, in order for us to realign, we got to repent. We got to repent. We got to repent. Uh, we can't realign, amen, without repentance. Uh, can't realign without, repent without repentance. Let's go to 2 Timothy uh, chapter number 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2. All right. Um. Verse 21, tells, tells, verse 21 tells us this, if a man therefore purge himself from these, all right, he shall be an honor, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctify, amen, meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Now, in order to, to back up, you have to, amen, um, what are we doing? Study ourselves, self, self approving unto God. We're shunning, amen, pro, uh, uh, we're shunning profane uh, and vain babblings, all right? Amen, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. We're changing in order for us to realign. We've got to change our language. Come on now, we've got to study, all right? We've got to shun, amen, the profane and vain babblings, all right, that produce the works of ungodliness, all right? And the scripture says in verse number 17, and their word will eat, Amen. As doth the canker worm. All right. We have to make sure. Amen. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying, Amen. The resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. All right. Um, 
But as we get down here, amen, it's the nitty gritty of it, amen. And verse number 22, it says, flee also you for lust, but follow righteousness, peace, or charity, I'm sorry, righteousness, faith, charity, peace, and them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. All right. In order for us to realign, we have to get back to, amen, what are the requirements, what are necessary. Amen. This is the Apostle Paul teaching to a young pastor, Timothy. Amen. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Amen. Get rid of the profane. Get rid of the vain babblings. Get rid of the things that are detrimental to your health. All right. That are detrimental to your spiritual man. All right. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, purge yourself. All right. Amen. Make yourself an, a vessel of honor. Amen. Uh, by sanctifying yourself and by being prepared. Amen. For the great works. All right. And then he says, go a step further to realign means I've got to, amen, flee youthful lust. All right. I've got to follow righteousness. I've got to follow peace. All right. Amen. With them that call name the Lord. All right. So realignment in some cases, amen, is a repentance. It is a repentance back to the works, amen, that God has called us into, all right? We can't be realigned to God's word, amen, can't be realigned to God's desire for our life, doing all the things that we did before we came into the presence of God, all right? And we're going to see that as we study, amen, some of these kings, all right? It requires self-examination, realignment, getting back to God, so getting back to God's will and God's purpose for my life, following righteousness, following peace, following charity, all right? It is a recommitment to fellowship, a recommitment to fellowship. All right. In order for us to realign, we have to recommit to following. Let's go to the book of Galatians. Again, I'm just kind of laying some foundations, kind of, you know, sharing some things. And hopefully these are things that uh, will, will be germane and will help us understand some of the things we're going to get into in a few moments. All right. So uh, Galatians chapter five. All right. All right. Uh, you know, tells us, amen, that the work of the flesh is manifest in these things, adultery, fornication, down around verse number 19, all right, uh, witchcraft, hatred, amen, uh, uh, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, uh, 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 envyings, and murders, and drunkenness, all right, amen, verse number 22 tells us, but the fruit of the spirit is love, and joy, and peace, and long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance, all right? Against such, there is no law, all right? This is the way for the saints, all right? This is the way. This is the fruit for which we have a responsibility to walk after. He says, and they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust, all right? Those of us who are in Christ, all right, we're steering ourselves away from those things that are not healthy for us. And verse number 25, it's the kicker, it says is, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. I know that's uh, that's a lot to that's a lot to digest. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Because there are many of us who say, "Amen, I, I, I've got the Holy Ghost and 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 He resides with us, and we operate in Amen the the workings of the Holy Ghost." But our walk is not in the spirit, and that can't be a contradiction. All right. We have to get into alignment. What is it? How is it? How is it that we live in the spirit? We live in the spirit. Amen. By operating in the fruit of that spirit. All right. And in that fruit, walking in that spirit. All right. It's impossible to uh, it's impossible to, you know, Holy Ghost feel speaking in tongues and and all those things that are, you know, just spiritual, you know, spooky, deep, all those kind of things. And a walk that does not amen, demonstrate that fruit. He says, if we live in the spirit, all right, we should also walk in that spirit. If we live in the fellowship of Christ, amen, our walk, amen, should be in that same, amen, tenacity and boldness, all right, in the spirit, all right? What, how do we walk in the Holy Ghost? We walk in the Holy Ghost by exercising love. How do we walk in the Holy Ghost, all right? We walk in the Holy Ghost by exercising joy and peace and being patient and long-suffering, amen? We can't just live in the spirit and enjoy all of the love of God and all of the peace of God and all all of the God's long suffering with us and we live in a world of great faith and all of, all of his goodness and his meekness toward us and his temperance toward us, all right? And we just enjoy all the byproducts of that spirit but never move from living in it to walking in it. We have to align ourselves with that. So realignment, amen, means I have to now get back into a flow of following, 
all right? Following his lead, amen, and walking after the fellowship, all right? Walking after his pattern, how he treats me, how he sups with me, how he's patient with me is what I have to carry on and what I have to walk through, all right? Alignment is really, in many cases, is <laughs> realignment in many cases is a recommitment to following, following God's blueprint, God's template, God's plan, amen, God's purpose, all right? Crucifying our flesh, all right, laying aside our affections and our lust, all right, laying aside those things that bring no glory to God, all right, amen, living in the spirit and walking in the spirit, all right, there has to be synergy, there has to be alignment, amen, with my personal devotion, amen, and my natural walk with Christ, all right, okay, and also, amen, uh, uh, requires a degree of forgiveness, yeah, yeah, yep, in order for us to be realigned, we've got to forgive, Let's go, uh, let's go back to the book of Ephesians, chapter number four. Ephesians chapter number four. And it's actually, it's interesting because e Ephesians actually flows from chapter number four to chapter number five. It tells us in verse number 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Uh, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Realigning ourselves, amen, to God's will again, it really starts with the things that we profess and confess. All right, um, we can't allow evil. The scripture tells us evil communication corrupts good manners, right? Uh, but we can't let, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. All right, everything that we say should bring about edification, everything that we say should bring about the alignment to the oneness. All right, and the scripture says this and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby you are see or sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away with from you with all malice. Come on, how can we be realigned, holding on to stuff? How can we be lined up with God's will for us, walking in the Spirit? All right, and we're still carrying venom of 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 the brokenness of the past and disappointments and failures and anger and wrath and the clamors and evil speaking. Right? Uh, how how can we do that? How we can we grieve the Holy Spirit? How is it possible to grieve the Holy Spirit by by taking on a disposition of bitterness and wrath and anger? Amen. By allowing corrupt communication to proceed out of our mouth, to allowing these things, Amen, to take hold of us and and never allowing us to be kind to one another, tenderhearted, amen, forgiving one another, even as Christ, amen, for, for Christ's sakes, have forgiven you. So realignment, amen, really starts with, in many cases, the, the concept of forgiveness, learning to let go, learning to cut the cord on things that didn't work, let, learning to let the cord of, of people who have failed you and disappointed you, learning to let the cord go, amen, on mistakes of offenses, amen, realizing, you know what, I may never get an apology, but I don't have to let that apology, amen, bring about a malice in my heart, amen, that allows, amen, evil communication to come from me, all right, or that I become filled with bitterness. There are some things, amen, uh, that you are just going to have to learn, amen, to walk in a grace of alignment to God's will and stop holding the bag of things that you cannot change. Realignment has you readjusting, amen, to the perspective of God and God's will, aligning ourselves to that. And, you know, and, 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 and I challenge you just, I challenge you right now in the comment section, just, just put, I apologize. I apologize. I want you to do that, Rumi. Those of you that are with me, some 20 something people that are with me in the comment section, just put, I apologize. I apologize. Just put, I apologize. Go with me for a quick second. I apologize. I apologize. What are you apologizing for? I don't know. But there are some people that just need to see that. And I'm hoping that if they see that, it triggers, amen, the weight of, even you, I had nothing to do with it, but I apologize. I apologize for who failed you. I apologize for the for the teacher that gave up on you in, edu in, in grad school. And so now you have a, a psychological complex associated with why you cannot, amen, endure post-education. Uh, 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 post I apologize to the people who didn't feel like you were smart enough. I apologize for the people who took your innocence. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I apologize for the people who neglected you and abandoned you. I apologize for the family secrets. 
that that in that 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 have wounded you and that have hindered you. I apologize for the ugly divorce. I apologize for the people who did not affirm you. I, I, let's just walk through the door tonight. I apologize for the people who violated you, who misused your trust. I apologize for the people who didn't come to push you into a psychological room that you felt you were worthy enough of it. And I need you to see this. And that's why I want you just to put it in the comment section. I apologize because somebody needs to see that. And I hope that that apology, although it's come 20 years later, although it's come five years too late, I hope that apology does something to trigger you to get back into realignment so that you stop holding the bag of bitterness. I apologize for every preacher that hurt you. I apologize for every amen evangelist, every person in church, amen, who was, who, 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 uh, had good intention, but then operate with the grace and class necessary, amen, uh, 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 to, to, to validate you and now you feel a certain way. I apologize for all the church hurt. I apologize, amen, for the boss, amen, in corporate America who didn't see the value in you. And so you spent the next, amen, six years second guessing yourself, amen, on, on whether I should be here or not. I apologize. I apologize for, for, for sometimes, amen, you have to realize that you may never get that. You may never get that. I apologize for the people who slept on you, for the people who gave up on you, for people who didn't believe in you, didn't have the confidence in you. I hope that you see that in the comment section. And it helps you get over what you may not get from a person. I hope that will be sufficient for you. Because for some of us, we're going we're gonna to get old and gray waiting for somebody to man up and woman up to admit, amen, that they, amen, uh, 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 didn't do things the right way. And it's choking our life. It's choking. It's choking our momentum. It's, it's, it's choking our ability to move into the next arena of life. And, 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 and more importantly, amen, it's grieving the very gift of God that's on the inside of us that's come to empower us to move forward. So realign, realign. I apologize. I apologize. You can't get that time back. You can't get that money back. I know you wasted energy. I know you wasted time. I, I, I the feeling of forsake. I, I, you know, I apologize. I apologize. Even though I had nothing to do with it, it's what you need for some of us, Amen. To trigger something for us to move to that next place in life. And I and, and I, I want to challenge you in life when you come across someone who's holding on to something, amen, that you know is getting in the way of what God wants to do. I challenge you as a Holy Ghost believer to stand in the gap and, and to be, amen, that gap blower says, I apologize. Because if you never get it from Big Mama, because Big Mama play favorites. Come on, come on, let's just walk through the door. Amen. If you never get that affirmation from your high school counselor again, Hallelujah, that you've been out of you've been out of college or you've been out of high school for for 25 years. Amen. And you still are holding on to what someone said that you could not do. I apologize. I apologize because in order for you to move to your next place in life, you've got to learn to forgive. You've got to learn to get back on the same wavelength as God, how God treats me. <laughs> I've got to learn to release people the way God has released me. I've got to learn to turn the page just like God turned the page with me. And so I challenge you in life. You're going to come across, amen, individuals in life, amen, who are going to be caught in that cycle and circle that keeps them, amen, moving forward. I challenge you, I deputize you to be that ambassador of change and love, amen, uh, 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 to, amen, uh, uh, to be the example of Christ and to say you are released from this. You don't have to wear this no more. You don't have to wear this oppression. Y'all praying for me because I'm feeling better, y'all. <laughs> you don't have to wear this anxiety. The scripture in verse number, amen, 32 tells us, Ephesians 4, 32 tells us, hallelujah, tells us, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sakes, have forgiven you. Because some of us hold God hostage for the things other people have done. It's true anyhow. And God is, is like, I had nothing to do with that. 
<laughs> you know, I have nothing to, you know, <laughs> I, I have orchestrated all things. All things are working together for the good, but you have judged me and, 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 and in the midst of it, you can be released. You need to be healed so that you can go back to loving and get back on alignment with God. How long are we going to stew with that? If you go over to first number one, amen, of Ephesians, it says, amen, I'm sorry, chapter number five, verse one tells us this. He says, be therefore followers of God as dear children. Verse two says, and walk in love. We're talking about realigning. We have to walk in love as Christ also have loved us. Isn't it interesting that when the woman at the well, amen, uh, 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 <laughs> Jesus having a conversation with the woman at the well, it's interesting how uh, that whole scene sometimes goes to my head about how Christ, God manifested in flesh, was able to identify the issue, but he didn't put the affliction on the girl. I ain't do you dirty. I ain't one of the five guys that you messed around with that didn't want to claim you. But I am the water that is living. I'm the living water that if you drink of me, you will always, amen, be satisfied. I thought that's such a, I, I really believe that is such a wonderful illustration because some of us can put our can put our finger on people's pain and put our finger on people's affliction, and and that's all we do is we just put we just we just put our finger on the pulse. We just put our we know what the root of someone's issue is, but you never come to be an agent of. But you don't have to stay there. And I'm hearing that I'm hearing the Lord, Amen, encouraging me to encourage and empower us as far as ways to realignment to walk in the love as Christ have loved us. He just loved this woman. Yeah, he called her, he called the, the sin out, but I didn't, you know, the, the 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 sentiment of being done dirty, and then the sentiment of being used, the sentiment of being displaced, the sentiment of 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 all those things, all I've come to do is to love you back into a place that you realign. And 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 what I love about that text, you go back and read it in John 4, is the woman at the well starts with being this woman who is you know, been with a bunch of guys. And by the time she finishes the chapter, she's an evangelist. Come see a man. Verse two of Ephesians 5 tells us, and walk in love as Christ have loved us. My God. <laughs> and have given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God as a sweet smelling savor. That's what we, that's what our charge is. We have to, amen, we have to walk as dear children of God, walk in that love, walk in that grace, walk in that power of forgiveness and, 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 and walk as an agent that comes to identify the issues, but help people to get back refocused and recenter where they're supposed to be in life. I wasn't expecting to go down this path tonight. Amen. But, uh, uh, but let's go further. Let's go further because forgiveness is so important. We don't talk about it enough. We don't talk about it enough. And that's why I say, you know, I apologize. I apologize. I realize that as an ambassador for Christ, I realize as someone who's, and, and you have that same responsibility as well. As someone who's baptized in Jesus name, my job is to be a reconciliator and to be a restorer. And sometimes being a restorer means that you have to take the weight, amen, of the offense. Christ had to become all these things. He had to become fornication to begin for, to, to forgive fornication, even though he never fornicated. He had to become unclean, amen, uh, uh, to forgive all uncleanness. You know what I mean? Even though he was never unclean, he walked in all of his perfect ways. And so in order to bring about redemption and to bring the true uh, designation of his love to manifestation. And I'm telling you that as an ambassador of Christ, if we're supposed to do greater works than these, if we're supposed to be now living epistles, amen, living word, amen, God manifest in flesh, and we're supposed to be his representation, sometimes we're going to have to bear the burden of things that we did not inflict to help bring about forgiveness, so instead of us sitting around saying, oh, I do child, I agree, and, I, and us holding, amen, other people to, amen, expectations and holding people to the past, sometimes we have to stand up and say, you know what, I, I, I apologize. I apologize for that domestic violence. I, I apologize that somebody who said they were baptized in Jesus' name, throw the Holy Ghost, put hands on you. Let's just walk through the door. I apologize that you had to live, uh, that you had to grow up in a home where you saw dysfunction 
and you saw a lack of love. But Christ has to come into the equation and be an end so that there can be realignment. And so sometimes we have to come in the operation and in, in the mode of forgiveness to be an end that becomes a bridge to someone to get back in alignment with God. And I know that's, that's, I know that's hard to stomach. But we as believers, if we're going to get this thing right, if we are going to be, amen, the light of the world, if we are going to be the salt of the earth, amen, we've got to be irritating. That means we have to come in sometimes, amen, and, and agitate situations to produce a healing that's necessary for people to move forward, to move in the grace and to operate in the grace that God has called them into. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to get to the Kings, but let me, let's go, let, let's, let's, uh, Let's uh, let's go further. Let's go further. In order to realign, we have to make amends. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter number 12. Romans, chapter number 12. Realigning sometimes is making amends. It's taking ownership. The scripture tells us what I beseech you, different brother, by the mercy of God, that she present your body living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service unto God. All these things that we're saying to, that we're that, that that we're asking for living sacrifices. Sometimes, I mean, uh, uh, the, the the animals they ain't do nothing but just be good, but they still had to be a sacrifice. Uh, I hope I hope we can get that. I hope we can get that concept, y'all. Uh, <laughs> amen. Being a living sacrifice hurts. You're alive and you're getting afflicted. You're alive and 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 and, and you're dealing with 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 uh, uh, the pain and 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 the reality of having to be a personal sacrifice to someone, but it's reasonable. <laughs> a living sacrifice, not dead, alive, but having to 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 be slaughtered. <laughs> Jesus, we have to make amends. Let's go down to verse number seventeen. Actually, let's start at verse number 10. Number uh, verse number 10 says, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. All right? That's law form business. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. It's all about realignment, y'all. In order to be realigned, I mean, <laughs> the apostle Paul is telling us you can't be sloth form business. You got to be fervent <laughs> in spirit <laughs> in serving the Lord. We have to get realigned, realigned. Amen. Uh, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. Come on, y'all. This is the Lord. Now, this is extra. This is not part of my notes. So just, <laughs> this is extra. I'm just flowing as the Lord giving it to me now, y'all. But as he's giving us revelation, as we see this, verse number, if you want to know how to get back into realignment, stop being slothful in business. Stop being slow about business. Be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Let's get hot. Let's make amends. Let's make amends, all right? Rejoicing in hope. Being patient in tribulation, realignment. There's an expectation that every one of us is going to go through something. Your last seasons should now recalibrate you amen, and realign you to the idea that I'm going to have to be patient sometimes with, with adversity. I'm going to have to be patient sometimes with bad news. I can't just pop off. I can't just jump off the edge. I can't just go off on the deep end. I'm going to have to learn to be patient in tribulation and to, re to make amends to the fact that sometimes God's will for my life is tribulation. Sometimes God's will for my life is some bad news. Sometimes God's will for my life is some things I don't have control over. Let's go back what, to, uh, uh, to, to Proverbs 20 and 24. If I knew my ways. <laughs> Uh, 20 and 24, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> man's steps are ordained by the Lord. How can man understand this, his ways? All right. I'm going to have to be okay with that. Let's go further. Continue, uh, continuing instant in prayer. Continuing instant in prayer. I'm going to have to develop to be realigned to God's will. I'm going to have to be steadfast and instant in prayer. Prayer can't be optional for me. I've got to realign. Distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. We're talking about realignment. This is, amen, this is what we have to do to realign ourselves, all right? Uh, uh, bless them that persecute you. What a thought. Making amends to the idea, amen, that in, that in, this, that in this walk with Christ, I will be persecuted. That's, 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 that's already something I'm going to have to, amen, reconcile myself to, all right? Oh, shall I? Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Nah, you just can't pop off this line. <laughs> no, 
persecution is already tough by itself, but then to, to make amends with the idea that I have to bless them that persecute me, bless and curse them not, and curse not, and hold my peace, all right? Rejoice with them that do rejoice, weep with them that weep, be of the same mind, amen, one toward one another, mind not high things, amen, uh, but condescended uh, to the man of low estate, amen, be not wise in your own conceits. Then verse number 17, which is what I wanted to get to as it relates to making amends is, amen, recompense to no man evil for evil. Make amends with the idea, amen, that, that, that God will have to just <laughs> be God. And I'm going to have to be okay with God being God as opposed to trying to get take justice into my own hands. He says, provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceable with all men. Making amends. Make amends. Direct amends whenever possible. Submitting to God. Submitting to his word. Amen. To biblical counsel. This is so rich here, y'all. This whole, this whole, <laughs> this is rich. For those of us who aspire to want to get back on the same way, feet link as God, amen, to, to realign myself with his expectations, amen, I, I've got to realize, amen, that in the course of life, in the course of getting to promise, I'm this good on the on the road to the promised land, there are some shady folk in the, in, 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 in the road to where God has for me, there's going to be some obstacles. In the road to where God's going, there are going to be some people I bless that at the same time got a knife in my back. And I'm going to have to make amends with that, but but live balanced according to God's word. Oh, help us, help us, help us, help us, help us, help us. To realign, I've got to, I've got to avail myself to continue. Somebody put that in the comment section. Continue, continue, continue. I preached that message one time, a long time ago. Uh, I didn't bust that out, but continue, continue. Let's go to the book of Psalms 139. Psalms 139. Psalms 39. Continue, continue, continue. Just put that in the atmosphere. Continue, continue, continue. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And, if, and, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. The thought of continue, the thought of, amen, realignment, amen, starts with us asking God to continue to examine our lives. Realignment is not just something we do once a year. Every day I get up, I've got to ask myself, God, search me. <laughs> God, you know my heart. You know the things I can't see I'm not privy to. Try me and know my thoughts. God, you know that there are wicked ways in me. Continue, amen, continue. That is a, 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 prompt, a, 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 a prompt confession unto God that I require his, his intellect and his insight and his knowledge, amen, uh, uh, to afford me, amen, uh, 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 the privilege of understanding, amen, where I am as it relates to being centered in his will, amen, on the daily, on the daily. If I'm going to make the straight gate, right? I don't want to get out of sync. I don't want to get out of sync. It's every day, Lord, search me. Every day, Lord, search my heart. Know my heart. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. That I would turn to walk with you. That I would turn, amen, to walk your way. He, this is, again, this flows right with, this flows right with Matthew 7. You know, we talked about the straight gate, all right? He says, and see if there's any wicked way in me, lead me in the in the way everlasting. If I'm asking God to direct me, if I'm asking God to show me his path, why wouldn't I get to the destination that he's called me into? Why wouldn't I get to the place that he has prepared for me? If I'm it, that's a daily examination. That is a continue, a continuance. Every day I get up to continue. Amen. I continue. God, show me. God, preserve me. God, amen. Pull this out of me. God, examine me. All right. And for many of us, the reason why we have seasonal success in Christ, amen. Uh, uh, and the reason why many of us are so far away from us is because uh, we only want we only want God to search us when we know we in the wrong. It's Lord, you know whether I'm right, whether I'm wrong. I mean, you know, even on the good days, I want you to search me. Even when I think I, I'm in alignment, I want you to search me, all right? You know my thoughts. You know my propensity, amen. You know, amen, the me that's the real me, 
All right. And so for some of us, amen, our, 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 our path toward the promise of God starts with us, amen, getting started with a continuance, amen, a continuing, amen, a continuation of self-examination to get back into God's will, God's way. Every day I get up and pray, Lord, search me. Every day I get up, Lord, lead me to the way that's everlasting. If I'm asking him every day to show me me, if I'm asking him every day to show me where my life, amen, aligns to his word, I have the option of course correcting. And what's crazy about it is there are many of us who fail in life because we don't ask the questions. I, I, I want to use this, this example in school. How many times I end in a semester by saying, you know what, man, I could have just went to office hours. I could have just asked the teacher. You know, the teacher has office hours, all right? <laughs> teacher has all this. The teacher gets paid, all right? Says these are my office hours come by. I will, you know, I'll coach you. I'll tutor you. I'll show you the game plan. I'll show you. In some cases, I, I, I didn't realize this later to my, in, my, in my academic career that in some cases, amen, the professors would sit there and nobody would show up. And had you shown up, I mean, the, the appetite of you coming to ask for information might have led him to be more generous or she to be more generous with you because you showed up. I hear the Lord say, I, I'm not here to hide no secrets from you. I'm not here to, hey man, I, I want as many people as possible to, to join me in these many mansions in heaven. All you have to do is ask me and I'll lead you in the way that's everlasting. But that's a pursuit of continuance. That's the continued model. Continue, continue, continue realignment, all right? Lord, continue showing me your way. In many cases, some of us fail in life and we had to answer the entire way. Some of us, some of us <laughs> could have gotten the answer key, could have, could have known, could have been prepared for the things that were coming, could have been prepared for the test, amen, could have made his destination, could have gotten A's, if you just would have shown us. And I believe that's going to be the detriment of some of us when we face the Lord on judgment day. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to. And the Lord said, but did you, did you continue to ask me? Did you show up and ask the questions? Why would I, why would I have hid my will from you? Why would I have hid my expectation? How, uh, how would I have given you the Holy Ghost, right? <laughs> All right, but not given you the insight and the, the, the wherewithal if you would stir up, if you would consult with me, if you would ask me to let you be successful. That brings us all full circle back to King David, right? <laughs> Lead me in the way that's everlasting. There is a way that is everlasting that God desires to show you. If you are willing to allow yourself to continue to be opened up. Nobody wants to have open heart surgery every day. But what if that surgery was necessary to keep you in the path of everlasting? What if that was what I needed? We're so dependent. We're so independent. That we stop asking, we're so in our own uh, understanding. We 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 we're, we're beyond Bible class. We're beyond all this. And we're so deep. We're you know we 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 just know so much, and it's that lack of continuing. Amen. The lack of amen continuing to go to God for instruction and insight that is detrimental to us, and that's why we have all these Broadway, amen religions and Broadway institutions and Broadway teachings and Broadway uh, uh, new Christendom in this day. God is saying, I will lead you to the way of everlasting. If you show up to office hours, <laughs> consult me. My Search my heart, God. Amen. Try me and know my thoughts. Be intimate with me and my thoughts. I want to be on the same page as you. I want to be intimate with you. Hey, Amen. I want my thoughts to be your thoughts. I know that's impossible because, you know, your thoughts are above my thoughts. But doesn't mean I can't ask for you to lead me in the way of everlasting. There's always going to be wicked in me. But I'm not going <laughs> to. Realignment sometimes is every day lining up. I will line to will today. And, and, I, and don't sleep on that. Don't sleep on taking it day by day. I, I remember getting saved and, and they used to tell us that salvation is sometimes is a day by day walk. And when you get grown in God, you get grown because you've been saved 20 something years and you stop, uh, you stop assuming that you need his hand of guidance and that you need his insight and his direction to show you that's the way that you find yourself in a path of destruction. So it's daily, 
It's daily realignment. Daily realignment. And daily intimacy. That daily intimacy. Uh, this is a good place to stop. <laughs> a good place to stop tonight. Amen. But I certainly hope somebody, amen, I promise uh, I've got one more of this in, in the real line because I want to deal with some of the kings, amen, of, of, of Judah and their approach to realigning to God's will and why it's so necessary for us, y'all, uh, to take spiritual inventory because God's not hiding anything. God's not hiding, amen, his, he wants us all. I really believe God is jealous. I really believe God is a jealous God. It's one of his characteristics. He's a jealous God. But I say to myself, if, if hell enlarges itself daily, then the competitiveness of God, I really believe that he will not be satisfied having more people in hell than in heaven because he's a jealous God. Now, I'm not, I'm not claiming no eternal salvation. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not claiming that at all. But I believe he's jealous, which means that if you ask him, to show you the way to everlasting life. <laughs> Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he want more people to be in his in, in, with him? I believe he's a jealous God. And I believe that there is nothing that we can't aspire in Christ to do that leads us to everlasting life if we're willing to be open. That's right, Sister Sandra. It's daily intimacy. Daily intimacy. Daily Lord. Look into me. Like I said, when I talk about the concept of intimacy, into me you see, daily intimacy. God, show me where my flaws are. Show me, amen, where I'm vulnerable. Show me where I need to grow so that every day I can realign myself to your expectation so that I can overcome the flesh. It's a daily walk. Daily. <laughs> a closer walk with thee, right? Is the song the same? Daily, you know? Uh, that's, 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 that's what we have to do. That's our charge. That's our that's our course for such a time as this. And I believe that as we take a daily approach to him, he prepares us. Amen. He he uh, uh, he anoints us. He guides us. He gives us the thing to be able to overcome the things that are in our way to bring us to broad, broad ways of destruction. Lead me in the way that's everlasting. Lead me in a way that is, amen, fruitful. Amen. And it all starts with us realigning. I hope you got something tonight. Amen. Again, as we go further in this study, amen. I'm going to break down, amen. Next week, I'm gonna, we're going to look at three different kings and what they did as it relates to realignment. We're going to look at, amen, what is needed to be realigned from the from the perspectives of relaunching and reconnection and repairing and rediscovery. Uh, I hope you will stick around because we're going to have, amen, some good time. We're also going to talk about order as it relates to, amen, uh, uh, realignment because there's an interesting... Amen. The economy of scripture that I want to talk about that deals with uh, God's order and God's alignment. So I hope that, amen, you'll bear with me for one more of these realignment Bible studies and then we'll move into readjusting. I can't wait to get into readjusting because I really believe and then reimagining uh, because I really believe that in order for us to take spiritual inventory, it's going to it's going to require all these elements. We're going to have to reconcile, amen, what we have, who we're supposed to be. We did all those lessons on that. Amen. We're going to have to realign ourselves amen uh, uh to amen god's expectation for us we're going to have to readjust amen uh, uh, uh because sometimes taking spiritual inventory means that we have to readjust amen our own pris prisms and perspectives and paradigms and then reimagine god's will for our life in this new season of promises amen if you desire salvation water baptism in the name of jesus christ amen you can be baptized in jesus name and filled with the holy ghost Amen. Realignment starts with you realizing I need the Lord in my life. Amen. You must be born of water and of spirit. And this last, in this last evil day, this, this last day, in this last day, amen, with the signs of, of the times that we're living in, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Amen. Uh, 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 in order to enter into the kingdom, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Is what he told Nicodemus. The water baptism in Jesus' name and the filling of the Holy Ghost. And I hope that uh, you'll pick up that phone if you desire prayer, desire salvation. Amen. You can be baptized. Amen. You can be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much this house. I'm feeling so much better. Amen. But nevertheless, I want to take a moment again to encourage you. Amen. To receive. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. To repent. Amen. To realign. Amen. 
amen, to get back into the fold of relationship well, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. We're praying even now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Help us to be recentered and realigned, even right now, oh God. I pray, oh God, that daily, oh God, we'll get up and ask you, oh God, to lead us to the way that's everlasting, oh, the way, oh God, that's fruitful, the way, oh God, that does not end in you, oh God. I pray, oh God, that tonight's Bible class will help us to realign ourselves, oh God, back into the things that you're calling for for such a time as this. Help us to have daily intimacy. Help us to rebuild our trust and belief and confidence in you. Help us, oh God, align ourselves, oh God, that we would line up with your word for such a time as this. We love you. We praise you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, if you're looking for a church home, look no further, but then some church, we are that church here at 4909 Crenshaw Boulevard in the city of Los Angeles, California. This is Pastor Kyron Shorter. We have myself, my wife, and the entire ministry team. We say God bless you. We thank you for being with us tonight. If you want to be a blessing to us, I encourage you to join us on Cash App and PayPal. Amen. Uh, you can sow a seed even right now. Be a blessing to our ministry, Zale. All the information is right there. Everybody giving, amen, tonight. Uh, let's align ourselves, amen, to God's plan, amen, for, amen, our lives as it relates to our stewardship and our giving. And so I'm praying for you even right now in the name of Jesus that uh, that you would give, amen, uh, give into the kingdom of God, amen, allow God, amen, to bless you in a new arena, amen, as it relates to your realignment with him. And uh, you'd be surprised how far your seed goes and what your step of faith does, amen, to get God's attention, amen. I know for some of us, oh, he just asked for money, but you'd be surprised how God takes notice, amen, when you sow, Amen. And how it sets things into motion for him because he sees an area of faith and where he sees faith, he's required to move. And so if you don't give, amen, then there's nothing for him to move off of. So when you when you put that seed in the ground, when you put that seed, amen, and you're giving and your tithes and offerings, amen, unto our Lord, you set in motion God's ability to perform on your behalf. And that's what he desires to do, amen. So join me in giving tonight, amen, join me, amen. Again, we're looking forward, amen, to seeing you our next in-person worship experience, which is March the 6th. This upcoming Sunday, we are going to be virtual, all right? And I pray that you'll uh, pray for us all. And man, we have a couple funerals that are up this weekend at the church and some other things that are going on. So we're still working, but we'll be enjoying the worship experience from home on this Sunday. Amen. And we're looking forward to God. Amen. Blessing in a mighty way. Again, on behalf of myself, Lady Shorter, the entire Blessed Church family, we greet you all in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. May heaven smile upon you. May you continue living a life that is realigned to his will. God bless you and take care, everybody. Peace.